So the requirements for good data collection, uh, we want to have contact mounting, uh, use the correct location. So mount the sensor or mark the equipment uh, in the same, so that the information, the data can be collected from the same position every time. And we want to apply the same force. So if we're using magnets or as we said, the uh, threaded connections, those are best. Uh, for airborne monitoring, we want to test from the same position, right? At the same distance and at the same angles. So for instance, if you're uh, listening to, um, oh, let's say you're listening to uh, uh, compressed air leaks, you should make up a round that says where you're standing and where you're pointing the device from how, how far off the floor, et cetera, so that you're collecting consistent data. And it should be under the same ambient conditions. That comes into play mostly when you're outdoors. Um, so if your weather conditions change dramatically, then you should probably wait to collect that data until the rain stops or the snow stops or whatever it might be. Um, and then you should ensure that you're using the same instrument setup each time. And we'll talk about the, uh, the instrument setup here. So let's talk about the correct settings now. Um, so we wanna get the settings right for the best measurements. And so the first thing to be concerned with is something called clipping. And clipping is when the range of amplitude that you're trying to um, collect data on is less than the amplitude of the data that, or the sound that's actually being generated. So setting the input gain sets the level to the maximum amplitude expected. And so if a signal exceeds that limit, you start seeing that the signal, um, the signals start exceeding the range of your scale, right? So some of the data gets cut off and this produces a harmonic distortion, creating other odd harmonics, uh, three times, five times, seven times. Uh, these can, uh, which are the only, only there because of clipping. And so clip signals, as you can see where these red arrows are pointing, uh, and then this zoom done uh, section here, you can see that there, those signals all tend to be at the same height and they look clipped, right? So the peak amplitude will be lower than it should be. The root mean square can be higher than it should be. And the frequency content it tends to be incorrect. So you don't get true representation of what the sound is. There's a thing called auto ranging, which can help. And that's the system can watch the signal and determine what the correct setting should be. However, if, it's, if the signal is not continuous, that is if there are suddenly changes to the amplitude, then the instrument may clip or, uh, and, and then auto range again. So you see on the left side uh, through the middle of this uh, time waveform, um, the range is automatically set based on the data that was being captured. But towards the end of this uh, time waveform, there was big impacts or something uh, that generated additional sound. And that signal will be clipped uh, and the instrument will again start to auto range. So um, that means you have to make sure that you're taking good long uh, data series. Uh, to make sure that the auto ranging <laughs> adjusts to any of what the, the new peaks are. So again, uh, auto ranging is when we want to uh, make sure that we're gonna be able to capture the widest amplitudes uh, for the sound signal that we're capturing. Some of the different manufacturers handle clipping a little bit differently. For UE systems, the sensitivity is adjusted by the user and you should adjust it to about 30% below the scale on the intensity meter to avoid clipping. Some of their devices do auto range and the auto range is, uh, it determines the best range automatically. With the SDTs, they use an up and down arrows on the display and there's actually a, a clipping indicator LED light on the front panel. So if you start seeing clipping, then you can increase the range. Um, and some of their devices do do auto ranging. Um, with Sonatec, all of their devices do auto ranging. 
So there can also be some anomalies, right? There can always be bad readings. So you could be taking the right reading from the wrong place. Um, could be that you're collecting data on a machine that's not running. Um, you could be reading suspiciously low or clipped signals. So it's always a good idea to take your time to make sure you're collecting good data. Think about whether what you're seeing or hearing makes sense to the piece of equipment that you're reading. So take a minute always and think about it. <laughs>